In today's video, we're gonna cover the psychology of money. A lot of people who have issues with money, typically more than 99% of the time have an issue psychologically, the way that they view money. You've heard it said before that money is the root of all evil, but in reality, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. There's a specific difference, see, because money in itself is harmless. It's just a tool. It's like a car. A car by itself is harmless. It's just a tool. But now you put a drunk driver behind the wheel of that car, all of a sudden it can become a weapon. Same thing with a knife. A knife in itself is just a tool. It can be used to cook up and prepare a beautiful, wonderful meal for the family, or it can be used to hurt someone and take someone's life, right? So the tool in itself is not the problem. The problem is the person behind the tool right? And that person's psychology when they're using it, right? So the psychology of money is the number one thing that holds most people back because they don't even realize the relationship that they have with money. See, growing up, if you grew up in a poverty-stricken environment or a neighborhood, you guys tend to grow up with a scarcity mindset. Why? Because you grow up around parents who are struggling, who are always fighting over bills or worried about how they're going to pay their rent, how they're going to put food on the table. So you grow up learning a scarcity mindset. Oh, like, I don't know where I'm going to get my next meal from. Like, there's not enough money out here. You grow up hearing your parents saying that, oh, these other people are, are getting favored at work or things like that, right? Like, there's just things that come up that you grow up around and you grow up constantly hearing. So naturally, it gets embedded in you as a child. You know, if your parents are arguing over sneakers for back to school day and you hear that when you're a child, when you're growing up, you hear them arguing about, you know, who's gonna get the new pair this year or if you're even gonna be able to afford the back to school gear and stuff like that. So a lot of that affects the way that you handle money once you become an adult. So I'm gonna break down for you guys the three basic principles behind the psychology of money. And my hope is that you change the way that you view money once you finish this video. With that being said, guys, let's get started. So first things first, here's the bottom line when it comes to dealing with money. You have two types of people when it comes to money. You have people who want to look rich and you have people who actually want to be rich. Wealthy, whatever you want to call it, rich, wealthy, it doesn't matter. But you have those who pretend who try to look like they have money, even though they're broke, even though they have nothing in their bank account, they'll go buy the Louis bags, the, the expensive vacations, they'll go you know, rent the exotic cars, they'll go do all of these things to look like they live a lavish life, when in reality, you go back to their apartment or to their house or even their car, and you'll see that their real life, their reality is a completely different story. The problem number one that we have as a society, especially in the Mexican American culture, is a lot of us wanna look rich. We wanna have the new truck. We wanna have the fanciest quinceañeras, the nice house and everything like that. So we can look good for fulano or fulana over there. And the reality is they don't really care that much. Other people don't really care. They might care for the split second that you show them, you know, hey, look, you know, here's a picture of my new house or here's a picture of my new car. But then after that, they go back to living their regular life. They go back to their normal job. They go back to their house. They go back to their family and they forget about you. They forget about you. You're trying to make a statement, but in reality, people don't care as much as you think that they do. And that gets people in trouble because now you're over here stuck with this bill, with this mortgage, with this car payment, this insurance payment, all because you were trying to show off it and prove to people that you made it, right? Because that's where it comes from. It comes from us wanting to prove to people that we're successful, that we made something of ourselves. The reality is that what good is it for you to have the material stuff if in reality you're struggling, you're living check to check, you're stressed out because you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, right? Which would you rather be? Would you rather look like you got a lot of money or would you rather have a lot of money? See, that's the difference, guys. That's why I used to be that way. But now you see, I don't post any stuff on my Instagram. Like when it comes to like material stuff, I don't really post my cars like that. I don't post my house like that. I'm not flexing jewelry. I'm not flexing watches. Like when you see me, I don't even wear jewelry. Sometimes I might wear a necklace. I have two necklaces and three pairs of watches. That's about it. I don't really buy stuff for myself anymore. Everything that I make and I earn goes towards my family and towards investing for my future or it goes back into the businesses. I stopped spending money on myself a long time ago. Like my wife literally has to buy 
buy me stuff because she knows I won't buy anything for myself. That's just how I am. Yeah, I, I have nice clothes and I like nice things, but a lot of this stuff is stuff I've had for years. A lot of the new stuff that I have is stuff that my wife gets for me because I won't shop for myself. Like I still have the same white vans for like, I don't know how many years and I've been meaning to go get a new pair and I just haven't gone to get one. But you gotta answer that question first and foremost. Do you wanna look rich or do you wanna be rich? Second of all, you gotta stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. In our culture, as a Mexican American, Chicano growing up in the United States, even in Mexico, you'll find that keeping up with the Joneses is a disease that we tend to have in our culture. It's where you're always trying to outdo the next person, right? This person gets spends 15, 20 grand on the quinceanera, the other person tries to spend 40. This guy gets a brand new truck, lifted, whatever. This other guy has to go and get one bigger and better. This guy gets a nice racehorse, the other guy has to get two racehorses. We're always in a constant battle trying to prove to each other like who's got more money, who's more successful, and that's what keeps us broke. That's what keeps the culture broke, that mentality, that whole mindset of like, oh, he got a nice truck, this is, I'm gonna show him like, I'm gonna get a new truck. I'm gonna go get, put some rims on my truck. I'm gonna go get my truck lifted. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go buy two trucks, or I'm gonna go get a horse. Matter of fact, I'm gonna buy a boat. And then when I buy a boat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get myself a Roly. I've been wanting a Roly for a long time, but you know? So these are the problems that we have that we need to correct, right? First and foremost, this all stems from caring about other people's opinions, caring about what other people think about you. We have to stop worrying about what other people think about us. It doesn't matter if they know you have money. Me personally, the way I live my life, I don't really want you guys to know how much money I make. I don't want you guys to even know that I have money at all. I really don't care. One thing my dad told me when I was a kid, he said, never tell anybody how much you make. Always keep your personal finance to yourself. It's none, nobody else's business. If they think you have money, great. If they think you're broke, great. That's none of their business. You do you and keep your stuff private because there's a lot of haters in the world. Hay muchos envidiosos, that's what he used to say. And so I always grew up feeling that way. Of course, when I was in my early 20s, I went into like my egotistical phase and my materialistic phase. And so we all go through that. That's normal. That's just a part of life. A lot of pride, a lot of ego. But as you get older, you mature and then you realize, man, you know what? My dad was right. Like I probably should have not try to show off so much. I probably would have had way more money right now if I would have invested it or done something smarter with it. But hey, it is what it is. Life has its ups and downs so that you can learn the lessons and then do better. Keeping up with the Joneses, guys, if you wanna be successful in life, if you wanna make a lot of money, if you wanna have a lot of money, you gotta stop trying to keep up with the Joneses because otherwise you're gonna go broke. You're gonna go broke because there's always gonna be someone who has more money than you. That's just the reality, guys. Even billionaires, there are billionaires who have more billions than the billionaires, guys. So you will never be the richest person in the world. So stop trying to compare, stop trying to compete, stop trying to impress other people. Just live your life, be grateful for where you're at and focus on your goals and like where you wanna be in life. And that's what you should be striving for. Forget about everybody else, what they're doing, what they bought, where they're going on vacation. Just focus on you. Instagram has a lot to do with that because you're constantly seeing everybody's highlight reel, but you have to be disciplined enough to know like, okay, yeah, they may seem like they're doing well, but in reality, we don't know. They might be or they might not be. Like, we really don't know, but stop worrying about it because it's none of your business. That's their life. Secondly, you need to realize that you are the problem, right? The reason why you're broke, the reason why you're struggling, the reason why you aren't where you want to be financially is because you're lacking some sort of knowledge, some sort of information, or you have bad money habits that you don't even realize. You know, you spend on impulse, you aren't disciplined, you eat out every single week, you buy four cups of Starbucks every single day, you spend money on concerts every month or every couple of weeks. These are things that you do. You're responsible for your money. I guarantee you almost everybody watching this video has made all the money they wanted to make, has been able to buy the things that they want to buy, but their spending habits have led them to spend all of their money, right? Some of you say, oh, well, I only spend what I need. But really, most people who say that, when I really look at their bank accounts and their spending and I really break it down for them, they spend a lot of money unnecessarily. They spend a lot of money on dumb stuff that they think is a necessity, but it's really not. And so you are the problem, guys. You have to realize if you're not making enough money, then you have a skill problem. There's a deficiency in, in your ability to make money, right? So if you're not making enough money, your problem is your ability to make money. So you need to go find a new set of skills. You need to go find a different job. Maybe go find another job, two jobs, three jobs. Doesn't matter, whatever it takes, that's what you gotta do to be able to get ahead. And that's the problem right there is that a lot of people will hear me say, go get another job, get two jobs, three jobs, and they'll be like, I don't wanna do that. 
Like, I don't want to work all day. I don't want to. All right, then stop complaining about being broke, bro. Like, if you're not willing to struggle for a little bit so that you can live great for the rest of your life, then you deserve to be exactly where you're at. That's why I said you are the problem. Your your mindset, your thought process behind that is, oh, I don't want to work. I don't want to be working all day. Like, you're lazy, homie. You're lazy. And that's why you are where you are. So either get your act together, hustle and grind right now that you can while you're young or even if you're in your 30s. Take advantage of the life that you have. Go out there, try to hustle up as much as you can, and then invest for your future, right? Understanding the psychology behind money and the reason why people are broke and the reason why others are rich is going to help you plan out your future and plan out the next steps that you need to take. Like I said, you are the problem. Your spending habits are the problem. Your lack of discipline is a problem. Your need for entertainment and food is a problem. Your earning capability is the problem. If you have all of them, then you definitely have a massive problem. You gotta figure out like, where am I going wrong? Like, what am I doing? Like, am I really spending only what I need to or am I like overindulging? Am I doing too much? You gotta figure that out for yourself. Lastly, you gotta stop making excuses, guys. You are in control. You will never get ahead in life if you're always making excuses. The only reason that I was able to get my company out of debt and overcome this massive hole that I had put myself in was because I said to myself, if I got myself in this mess, I can get myself out. I took responsibility. I said, okay, I'm here because of my bad spending habits. I'm here because of my pride and my ego. So I took responsibility and said, I'm where I'm at because of me. This is my fault. But if I'm the reason why I'm here, then I'll be the reason why I get out. Right. And so I just started to take responsibility for my actions and the thing, the way that I was spending my money, the, the way that I was saving it, the, the way that I was just operating as a business owner and all that kind of stuff. So that made a massive change. And then sooner or later, you start to realize a lot of the problems in your life, not just money related, but a lot of the problems in your life and your relationships at your workplace or wherever. A lot of it is also your fault, too. And that, that's why that book, Extreme Ownership, really helped me a lot because it just allowed me to eliminate all excuses from my life and just take responsibility for everything. Even if it's really not my fault, I still take responsibility. If that person cut me off in traffic, I'd be like, man, I shouldn't have left my house at 7.55. Or else that person wouldn't have had the opportunity to cut me off, you know? Because it's got to be like kind of crazy with it sometimes. But that's the basics of the psychology behind money guys remember money is just a tool money is not good it's not evil like money in itself is just a tool it's the people behind the money that use it for good or bad secondly realize that you are the problem like check yourself go really analyze yourself how you've been spending your money how have you been spending your time like i'm sure some of you have had so much time in the day you could have had another job you could have had two three jobs you could have learned a new skill you could have applied yourself to learn something so, so you can make more money so Realize that you are the problem. And number three, just stop making excuses, guys. The more you make excuses, the longer you're going to delay your ability to get yourself out of whatever mess that you're in. You gotta take responsibility, you gotta take ownership, and realize that you are in control, and you can do whatever it is that you really wanna do in life. If you stop making excuses, you take responsibility, and you start putting together a plan to execute. Nothing happens on accident. Everything happens for a reason. Anyone who's ever been successful in life, has always had some sort of a plan. So if you don't have a plan, make sure you create a plan and just make sure that you guys change your psychology about money.